Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation, along with... CJ Lou from the Fired Up with CJ Show. woo That's the quiet Rue is sleeping once again. Oh. If you've ever wanted more energy and enjoyment in your life, then do we have the Spark Joy Show for you. Today, we'll talk about finding that spark, lighting that candle, and bringing more joy and energy into your life. That plus we'll talk about the power of sunlight bathing, fall swims, heading south, positive goals, friend time, integration time, the magic of 46, the magic also of 200K, and what in the world ceramic kitties and toes have to do with anything. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, CJ. Are you ready to shine? I am ready to shine. Woohoo! Coo -coo -coo -coo. What do you do now with Rue? So, because I mean, the weird thing, I'm going to put grounding <laughs> patchouli red spike art and levitar it smells awful but maybe it will ground me more um okay i'm always terrified to think about toes because the last time i talked about toes you were talking about how you stuck your feet in the water and you had little just like i think they do this in um japan maybe yeah the nibblers yeah. came and ate off all the calluses on your feet so <laughs> that's the last time we talked about your feet, Michael. Well, this time we're, we're, we're visiting the in-laws for just a couple more weeks. And um, they, they, it, <laughs> I was in, the bath, in, in their bathroom and I put out uh, an, an extra towel for us to dry our hands in the morning. I've got big hands and so I need, I need a big poofy towel or my hands stay wet. And so I use the towel. The towel rack thingy starts to fall off of the counter. I grab it, but the towel brushes a ceramic cat uh, toilet brush holder, and and it <laughs> tips over and breaks over my foot. <laughs> Wait, it breaks I, over your foot? Wow. Yeah, so ceramic broke. I may have boo-booed toe. We'll know later today or tomorrow. It hurts. It's okay. <laughs> Wait, so the ceramic kitty fell from above, down, and hit your toe? Nope. Picture a toilet brush holder. They're always down on the yeah, floor yeah, yeah. holding a toilet brush. Mm -hmm. And so the towel thing was on the edge. It kind of falls. I grab it. I got a brass ring on it. I grab it. But the towel is dangling below it. It brushes against the cat, the ceramic thing that's holding the kitty bowl cleaner. Or the, the cat, the not kitty bowl cleaner, the toilet cleaner because it's tall. And it goes zook, <laughs> down on my foot. So you think and, you may have a broken toe. Who knows? Uh, all, of, all of these ha things have messages and, and, and the message is it's time to get a little bit more exploring again. We know that. Mm. Um, but it, life is so full on right now. We've discussed this and it's all perfect. Yeah. Um, that <laughs> you go, ow, okay then. <laughs> and you just laugh <laughs> into all of it. You laugh wow. into all of it. Wow. So of ouch. course I did leave the bathroom and, and, and I, I told Jessica's mom who's looking around the corner what happened. I said, I killed it. <laughs> Mia culpa, it's dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can, can you walk okay? Or oh, yeah, can, yeah, no, and no, you can no exercise. Problem. So you just, like when you break a toe, you can still it's, move it's along. It's my second toe from the end. So oh. it's a little sore right now. I haven't run yet. I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, oh, so hilarious. it took a little bit of a hit. It's a little bit swollen. And you just laugh. This is this is a show about finding the joy. And so laugh, laugh into all of it. Laugh into the lunacy. Laugh into the the, the, the craziness of having our, our infinite spirit squashed in this tiny little body. And we get to work with this thing. S stuff happens. Yeah. Wow. OK, so so you're going to be doing some swims as well. It's, it's been getting nice and cool here, although this week has been warm. But I've been baby stepping my way up. And yesterday I. I don't even know how I got to an hour swim in this beautiful lake and it was just so peaceful. And right now we're looking for the bliss line. We're looking for what brings us joy. And so it, it takes a good drive. It was about 30 minutes. Actually, it was a lot longer in rush hour traffic yesterday, but it should be about 30 minutes each way to get where I want to go. And it's important that I kick myself out of the RV or out of the house, so to speak, to go do those things that bring me joy and light me up. Even though the natural inclination is, oh, I gotta go drive. There might be traffic. That's our all, all of our natural inclination is is I'm too tired. Let's not. Mm -hmm. But those things that light us up, if we can get ourselves out to doing it, sort of like if you can take the dunk into the cold water, you light up. Mm -hmm. Do what you can to get yourself 
out to what lights you up. Mm, you know, and, it's, oh, go ahead. Well, it's funny because oh, I just, I, just I, I was, I was, um, it sounds one, um, incredibly cool. <laughs> and I know your, your, your body is up for it, but swimming in and, an and, hour. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll admit, um, I've gone to a wetsuit now for the fall. Okay. So I went a little bit earlier than expected. So you got your face in really cold water, your hands in really cold water. Mm. You're, you're cold in the wetsuit for a minute or two. And then you're just, it's just pure joy. You're just mm. flying along. And in this place, there's lots of vegetation growing well below the surface. And so I imagine, I might be incorrect. I haven't tried swimming down in the vegetation and wrapping it around my arms and stuff. Um, I imagine that I'm swimming above a giant forest. Hmm, that's nice. And it's just very, very peaceful swimming across the top of the trees. Mm. Oh, that's nice. I have a friend who's been swimming in um, in the uh, Puget Sound and doing the same. And she's like, it's amazing because I'm swimming and I see the mountains. And then, like, you know, you're just swimming and there's no one out there right now. I mean, there's very, there's very few things out there. Um, but she said it's amazing for all the reasons that you mentioned. She just said it's it feels very peaceful because it's like your float. It's like it's like a baby in ambiotic fluid. So you're just like, you yeah. know, yeah, very nice. And I look at it as, as flying. It's it's just thick air. That's what it is. It's a denser liquid. Air is a liquid too, and we call it in gaseous form. But it's all the same stuff. One's a little denser than the other. So you are flying. In her case, Puget Sound above the kelp forests and and above whatever other beautiful things are growing mm. down there. And that has got to be because I know Puget Sound not that well but i've been out in it and i've taken a ferry across a whole bunch of times that's stunning it is really beautiful so she's doing that she's taking a class of midwifery she has no idea why but she's just decided to do it so it's just and i said Very wow cool. it's like it's like you're going out there and rebirthing yourself like learning how to rebirth yourself and then you're in this and she said it just brings me so much joy um so it's it's interesting that the two of you living completely different places she's doing exactly the same thing for the same reason to bring more joy and I went to um I went to my um nutritionist and uh chiropractor who have almost who I've been seeing starting November 4th for an entire mm -hmm. year and going through all sorts of things with my body and it's the first time that he's like check check it's like wow you're good he's like wow things are changing so radically in your body I was like yay I mean I'm still going through um I feel I mean the weirdest thing is I feel like things are, are changing on the astral body not necessarily my actual physical body because my physical body feels okay but I think it, it, and this is the idea that you have many different kinds of bodies so there's like you know the emotional body is the astral body that sits outside of your physical body and I feel like all the changes are happening on my astral body and um, and even those are kind of settling down so it's 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 crazy and and, and I said how and I was I, I was trying to guess I'm like what is happening to me I just do you have any theories? Because he doesn't work like a lot of clients like me. He has kind of more mm -hmm. traditional, like my back hurts. I threw it out when I was running, you know, that kind of stuff. And he said, and I said, my theory is, is that, you know, I'm, I'm changing on the astral body. He's checking. He's like, yes, you are changing on the astral body. And, you know, as I'm, cl as collectively we're going through these things, I'm like, a, I am a magnet because still within me is, um, anxiety and fear and so anytime anxiety and fear is in the collective it still grabs on to me and I need to clear it and I actually don't have any more personal content that's creating anxiety and fear it's just content that is unknown and clearing it and it's hard on my body and he said well you know maybe one way to think about this is to not think about he said, you know, so I'm, he, he who is a, you know, a practitioner, a national doctor is saying, you know, I'm, I'm rethinking because, you know, people go to the doctors, they come in because something is broken and they want to be fixed. And so they focus on the symptoms without thinking about like a different cure aside from going to a doctor. And he said, I, what you want to do is focus on nature healing this on its own mm -hmm. by itself and not interfering with it. 
and to focus on love and joy. So, so it's, it's, it's a similar kind of thing that I've, I think you've been doing all along, but the, the addendum to it is, um, and they do this in coaching. You try to actually think of a positive goal, not a negative goal. So it's the whole right. manifestation. It's focusing on posit the positive thing you want happening versus the negative. But if you just focus on joy and love and light and peace, serenity, space, whatever it is that you want, just focus on that in your life and building up around that. It's, um, it's just a different way of approaching the problem. If not even the problem, uh, I guess, bringing in more of that which you seek. It's, I love the parallel here. So I started over in South Dakota a few months back, and now we found a, a good practitioner here, a chiropractor who does these other techniques as well. And I am seeking to get my body back to its most natural state, get it mm -hmm. back to a state of perfect health. It's not that things are wrong. I'm not going in because things are wrong. I want to make them more right. Mm -hmm. And and that sounds like what you're doing. And and I was asked, I don't think it was him who asked, but it was somebody who asked recently, why didn't you do this before? It really never occurred to me. I wasn't in that head space. And now I am. I, I've known this is the vessel. This is the temple. Your, your, your vehicle is your body. But now that strong desire of um, not just performance goals, that's always there, but what can I do to get it as help, ha happy and healthy as I possibly can? Yeah, optimal performance for my body, optimal performance and joy for my body. It's a very yes. different thing than again saying, "Oh, my back hurts," and here's another little thing with my ankle. Blah, 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 you know, like and 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 versus saying, "What do I need for optimal joy?" It's such a very different way, and I've done that with coaching. I just haven't done that with body work, and so it's just an it's it's so parallel with the whole idea of this of this of, of this pr the premise of this show today is about finding joy versus getting rid of pain it's just a very different Bingo. yeah brilliant so tell me a little bit more about what the magic of 46 and 200,000 you have the 200K, the magic of 200k is that it took uh inspire nation i mean we've done great as the podcast we're, we're doing well we're doing exceptionally well on YouTube, but it took us five years to get to 100,000, and that's kind of a big milestone in YouTube, and five years to get to 100K uh, subscribers, and then a year and a half more to get to 200,000 subscribers. Wow, that's pretty so, fast, 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 but that's because you've, you focus a lot on kind of fine-tuning everything in the last year and a half. Fine-tuning everything, and our YouTube live events, which we have every Sunday night, which were until, I don't know, three, four months ago, a couple thousand people watch it at once, and then you get maybe wow. 10,000 watch it total. Now um, 6,000 come together at the same time, and you have at least 20 or 30,000 that watch it in just a couple days. Wow. Um, and that's just on this huge curve of focusing less on, um, we'll, we'll, we'll call it as a positive, focusing on what energy can I bring to each show? Mm. What's the energy I want to bring tonight? And how can I transmit that energy? Mm. And as I'm doing that, because that's what we need more than anything, that's what today's show is, Sparking Joy is about going to the energy. Mm. Yeah, I think that's great. Well, so first of all, congratulations again. Super exciting to get to 200,000. That is a huge milestone, Michael. I, and and also to have that much trajectory growth during a year and a half because you've been just trying all sorts of different things. But it's interesting to think of like, you know, you've been doing a whole bunch of tactical things too, right? Like you shortened your videos. You've been like amping up the video editing. Is that yep. right during that year and a half? But mostly what you're saying is... We tried is the shorter ones. Didn't work. We tried another version of short ones. Couldn't get that to stick. A lot of it because of the bandwidth we have as the team mm. um, went for um, just me only shows. Couldn't get that to work. Um, working even more on thumbnails and titles. That's been helpful. Um, releasing some compilation shows. Those have been decent. Um, releasing some of our original shows again, digitally remastered because nobody will find them from six and a half years ago in the vault. That's been helpful. So there's been the swimming through the water of finding what like you're saying. 
what's worked. And, and ultimately, it's come down to understanding who we are, what's the message we're trying to get across. Okay, this is a mystical show. Got it. Check. Let's not focus on the health aspects. Let's not focus on the time management aspects. Good stuff. But let's keep to our core mission and understand it's all about energy. Mm. What your job is, is to transmit energy. Does this guest transmit energy? Do they not? Does this interview transmit energy? Does it not? Does this talk you're going to give uh, on Monday night for our live event, does that transmit energy? Mm -hmm. Focusing on the energy, like focusing on the joy, changed everything. Mm. Wow, isn't that fascinating? So it's just really, really not focusing on the on the goal, but the most positive aspect of the goal, which was energy. And it, and not surprisingly, I'm going through the same kind of thing where I thought I have to actually redo my whole website and just redo the whole show because it's not in alignment anymore. I can just feel it over the last year. It's just the guests that I'm having on. I'm not like I'm not finding it. I'm not excited to get on the radio show and talk to folks. And, it, and it, I think it does transmit something. Right. It transmits this kind of, mm, you know, I don't know how to it's describe it. It's a challenge because it's. Well, if you're having a bad day and you have an interview, oh boy. If you're not really into the guest, oh boy. Because you and I aren't playing, nobody is, but most people aren't aware of it. People, if you're listening to the show, you are aware of it. We're not playing in a physical plane. We're playing on the, on the astral plane. We're playing on the other side of the veil. Mm -hmm. And so if it's a guest where you've heard it already before, if it's a guest where you're propping up their energy, mm -hmm. if it's a guest where it's just not lighting you up, it ain't lighting up your audience either. I'm sure I mentioned last week that I completely blew up a show before. A big part of that was energy. Mm. The energy wasn't there, and there was nothing I could do about it. Mm. Well, that's and it's so interesting. all about energy. It's very interesting that you say that because there are energies in which I feel like I'm the person energizing the guest or... Um, the energy is, is I'm just, I'm not bringing it because I just, I'm like, oh, I've heard this like a thousand times. I'm, I can't, I can't go there. So I literally went to my, yesterday I was going through my business plan and reading through my business plan and thought, okay, I'm actually going to be way more selective. I'm going to actually, because right now what I do is I get people from, you know, both of us get publicists sending us information and we res respond to that based on the, I have like a plethora of emails, which one, I'm sort of don't want to see those emails anymore because they take time. I mean, my yes. mailbox is just flooded. I get it. From so many emails. So that's one thing. But I think that just the thought, I, I do think it's an alignment. It's, um, I've been doing leadership training, and, I, and another way of saying the same thing is it's about what they, what they find with leaders is the most effective leaders do a couple of different things. One is they're not – like complying and kind of just, you know, phoning it in, which is what I think I was doing is like complying, like this is what's happening. This is what I've been given. This is so easy to do because the whole mechanism is set up. It's way less effort to just do what I was doing. And that's probably true of everything in life. If you've already done it, you know how to do it. Just continue doing. So there's complying and then there's this kind of aggressive aspect of it, which I don't really have in this radio show. But what they, what they, um, what this leadership assessment shows is that courageous authenticity is really important along with mission and purpose and mission. And if you just focus on those two, those are the positive aspects, not focusing on the negative, but focusing on the positive, um, that those things are actually hugely amplifying. People want to follow you as a leader yeah. when you are courageously putting yourself out there, just like you're doing, which you're going out there and channeling information like if that's not courageous authenticity i don't know what yeah. is but then also getting really clear on your mission which is to transmit energy that's that's it so it, anything that's not that gets cut off the plate i mean it's that's what being on purpose and mission is all about and so it's just a different lens on the same thing that we're talking about I'm going to go way back when I was in my MBA program <laughs> all the way back <laughs> at the turn of the millennia. Um, and I read a Harvard Business Review on Firestone Tires. And Firestone Tires had something like a 95% approval rating. It was really good. And management says, 
We want to see if you can do better. What can you do to focus on making everybody happy? Mm -hmm. And what happened? Their numbers of, of customer satisfaction went way down. What? To make everyone happy? You mean customers yes, happy or employees they happy? focused uh, customers. The customer satisfaction went down because they focused on the 5% who were unhappy rather than being true to their core mission and focusing on those who were happy. Oh, wow. And so Isn't that they fascinating? got off center. In other words, what you're saying is fearlessly be you. That'll bring along 90, 95%. It probably won't bring along 100. I'll still get comments. Don't like your woohoo. Can you tone it down? Can you do this? Can you do that? And I love everyone. But I have to be me. You have to be you. Mm -hmm. Everyone. It's, it's the hardest thing because we're taught the, the, what is it? The tallest nail gets hammered down. We're taught this lifetime not to be you. Mm -hmm. You can be your Hollywood version of you as long as you're being somebody else. But you can't be you. Right. But since it's an energetic game, the only time that your energy is going to resonate at max is going to be in harmony with the universe mm. is when you're you and nobody else. Mm. And so as soon as you try to please everybody by not being yourself, by dimming your light or changing your frequency, everybody can sniff it out and run. Yeah. Yeah. That's so interesting. Yeah. So it's I, I do think it's it's all about um, my like finding joy and and. Also realizing when you've missed, like, I, I have been so busy since August, and I finally, this week was the time when I could get back to automatic writing for myself to meditate like a full 40 minutes versus squeezing a meditation in between yep. in 20 minutes, or sometimes even 15 minutes. And what I got when I was doing my own automatic writing is the importance of you know, this whole idea of collective healing, I've been focusing on others more than self, where the idea that, okay, I need to heal the collective, so go out there and help everyone. You know, I'm like sitting there doing all these sessions and everything. And what I got in automatic writing this week was that it's about healing yourself just as much as healing others. So if you don't focus enough time healing yourself, channeling, doing, your light can't shine, like your light is less bright. And, and, um, mm -hmm. And it's interesting because when I'm meditating, I think I told you, I don't know if I told you this last week, but when I'm meditating now, there's just a stream of light that comes in while things are being released. So there's just a simultaneous like streams of light coming in. And sometimes I'll open my eyes like, is it sunny out? Because there's just all this light that just automatically comes in and stuff being released. And I'm learning how to release the stuff with more gentleness. It's going to come out. And I tried to, like, eliminate it. It can't be eliminated. I, I've tried. I tried to, like, change my mindset. So it's like energetic changes will happen painlessly and effortlessly. And, I, you know, I sat there, did all the work, figured out what kinds of things blocked that goal. And it still kind of came up the way that it's supposed to come up because I think it's just – Stuff that wants to release, it's going to release and integrate regardless, you know, of what kinds of, you know, mind trickery I'm trying to do. So, but it was interesting. But if I could just simultaneously hold the light as this part releases and then ground into the earth, I'm learning that this is the way to manage these to this so that it doesn't feel like it's destabilizing. Because this, when yeah. energy is releasing, um, yeah. I guess a purification process where you have stuck energy when it releases, you can help calm yourself down to help it settle, right? You don't have to keep on, you know, letting, you know, letting it go crazy unless it wants to, you can just uh, relax because my body is, this comes up and it's like, Oh, you know, it's like ready for me to fight it. Energy I, goes up. Yep. Yeah. Energy is going up. And I, my natural instinct, if you have something that's coming in from your butt, you're going to be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's like a natural instinct. <laughs> just, just, but to just like, okay, allow and relax. I, I, I can have it come up and it's a shaking like earthquake, but relaxing back down into it and not making any narrative associated with like, what is that? How come it's happening? Why is it still happening? I did this work. Blah, blah, blah. It's just like, Release it, let it go down. It's just energy that is coming up to heal and to integrate. So if you, 
shake up a dirty, you know, little jar full of, of sand and you keep or dirt and you keep on shaking around. Guess what? It takes a lot longer to settle. So just yeah. <laughs> it comes up. You know, if there's anything you can do, it's just to relax, to let it go. And then to also allow the light to simultaneously come through. So it's just been very interesting during my meditation because it is allowing the joy to be in there and to relax as things break apart. It seems like the theme of this last couple of years. I like it. We, we've been spending time, Jessica and I, when the sun's out and the sun has been out for a day now, which is Thank God. It's, it's, we, I, I've, I've been counting the hours of sunshine. And uh, since we're in the wet side of the country now, there hasn't been much sun in months. And uh, we're, we're going and sitting outside. Uh, we hit a two-day, two-week stretch where I counted well, uh, three hours for 13 days and then four and a half hours for 14 days of total sunshine. Um, but now it was out for quite a bit yesterday. It's out now. And so we're going and sitting on the earth grounding at least getting the feet on the earth because i mentioned it's very wet here uh so at least getting the feet on the earth but spending that time not trying to get a tan but soak in the energy of the sun and then ground down into the earth and it's kind of a balance of those two as well allowing the the natural grounding property the earth to take care of the energy yeah it's really important i didn't i think it's it's integration it's about integration and it's and it's funny because that was a I had three days of clients earlier in the week and um, I've had such magical things happen with clients it's actually unbelievable the kinds of magic and transformations that have happened and I was there was a part of me that was expecting the same thing to happen during I'm kind of at the halfway point now with some of these clients I was expecting like I wanted some magical, Drake transformational thing to happen because a lot of my, like I, the way that my system runs is there's always like some gigantic thing kind of like filtering through and it happens a lot with not a lot of integration time because my system can assimilate things pretty quickly. Um, And I was wanting that and I noticed I was sad after, like a little bit disappointed after my coaching sessions because that wasn't happening. And then I thought, why am I disappointed? Oh, it's because I have an expectation that every time I'm going to meet with a client, something like grand and transformative will happen. And I realize whether it's my client or myself, integration needs to happen because you can have these grand experiences. And if you don't integrate at all, um, it it still matters, but you're not stabilizing in that new state of being by doing the integration time. So... You know, so once someone, you know, and and instead of being happy, because when I really think about what was happening on session three of these six sessions is that they were telling me I've done this change and I'm integrating it and things are working. I'm practicing and I'm changing and I'm practicing and I'm changing. And I, it was just a mindset. The only thing that was unhappy was my expectation that something transformative and miraculous would happen. So, so even in coaching, like you you can do all this work on yourself and even still like there's, you can see how your expectations and judgment of yourself or judgment really of my, maybe I don't think it was intended, but like there's underneath it is a judgment. Like you should be transforming now more, you know, but it's like, there's, there needs to be, integration time where you're lying on the ground and I know that but I think that this is one of the things I'm learning this year about the importance of get big work done take a nap to integrate you know have like a crazy you know set of days lie on the ground like you you and Jessica did it's so important to do and I don't think we give ourselves enough time because we're just kind of a go 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 kind of Mm -hmm. place and so that seems to be the theme for me this week and that does it bring joy? I don't know if it's really a joy-focused thing so much as being able to stabilize the gains that you've made. It's interesting. And that's, uh, I guess that would be my last la- last point here for today. Is does it bring joy? It brings pause. And the pause gives time to enjoy what matters most. Because if you're given, this is the, the vacation challenge that people have is you get an itinerary for your vacation and you want to do, do, do to check things off the list, but you do so many things on the list, general 
it's, it's, it's a generality. You do so many things on the list that you're exhausted at the end of your vacation mm -hmm. because you didn't build in the pauses. Mm -hmm. And so taking the time on the earth, which is actually to me very sweet, that time with Jessica just sitting there, even if the clock is going, you know, you need to get to do this and you get to do that. And I'm like, wow, that's quite the addictive hedonic treadmill you seem to be on there, <laughs> Michael. <laughs> But I can appreciate things better if I put a pause in between them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think the seek joy, also seek the pause. How about that as an amendment to the show? Seek pause and uh -huh. the pause. Pause and the joy. <laughs> So uh, did we get to everything of yours? I think you had positive goals, friend time. Did we miss something there? No, I think sh the only thing was just how seeing friends just brings me so much joy. I, I, I have literally not seen friends hardly at all. And so it seemed almost decadent to spend, you know, two hours with friends yesterday. But it was so joyful. And what I noticed is that I've been trying to figure out what is the total number of clients and how to space the day. And mm -hmm. I've been able to figure out how to figure out my schedule. And it was, and, and sometimes um, you have to actually go off the road. And, you know, f like I went completely AWOL during this last, you know, from August to now, trying all different things, like nine clients in a row, three, you know, clients with a half an hour space in between. That also didn't work. And so now I feel like I have figured out, I've been fine tuning a recipe and finally have figured out the right amount that gives me like friend time, a little bit of meditation, time to eat lunch, which I wasn't giving my time. Important. But I think yeah. that it's just about, it's, it's, this is about, it's another theme of, I guess my theme is integration because it's about integrating all of these last couple of months learning and figuring out, okay, well, now what do I do? How do I actually craft the perfect work week for me so I can give back but then also receive? So those are my, those are my tips for my finding. I think that that's finding joy for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, any last words of wisdom? No, that's it. All right. I think I'm good here. I would just, I would be a seeking joy machine and a seeking pause machine. We'll call it that. And you, ha you have to know, you don't have to do anything. But if you uh, bring intention to it, you will find it. Yes. So for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler and CJ Lou from the Fired Up with CJ show. Saying be well, have fun, seek joy, seek pause, seek breath, seek earth, and above and beyond all else, shine bright. Woohoo!